Ladies and gentlemen, I have a great guest today. And Duquette here. What 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 title do you want to go by? Because you said Red Sox Hall of Famer. That'll do it. Thank Maxwell you. Podcast. Thank, that's thank, how thank. that's how we'll start that one off. <laughs> All right. Thank you, buddy. I, you know, I want to ask you a question because you you're you've been in this whole practice of front office stuff. What did you think about Brad Stevens moving to the front office from the coaching stand with the Celtics? Well, I I, I love Danny Ainge, right? I mean, if you, you want to look at a guy that had a career. Here's a guy. He was a high school All-American. He was a college All-American. He played two sports Wait a minute. in the Hold big league. You know, I'm not going with this two-sport thing. Danny did he not. He played in the he, big leagues he in hit Toronto. One home run. I, I saw him play like... at Fenway Park. <laughs> I saw him play at Fenway Park. Now, his heart was in basketball. We know that. Uh, but, um, you know, Danny had a great career, and – how about Brad's background, right? A great college coach. He'd come here and he he distinguished himself as a coach. Uh, he knows players, right? I, I I think it's a natural move for him, and uh, I'm kind of excited. Uh, uh, you know, he 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 adopted New England, right? Yeah. He adopted New England. He wants to be here, and uh, I think he's going to provide some good leadership for the Celtics. The thing you look at Boston, this is one of the most difficult cities to manage, play all the things combined because of, you know, the expectation level of the fan base? Well, I, I think because the fans are so passionate about sports here, right, it matters, Yeah. right? It, it matters. And fans know um, what you had for breakfast, right? In Winsocket, Rhode Island, right? The the, uh, the grandmothers know what the star players had for breakfast that day. That's, that's, that's the way it is, like, but it matters. Uh, but the other thing about Boston is Boston's had an extraordinary run of championships, yeah. right? And if you're not good in Boston, you're, you're not that good in the minds of the fans, right? And all the franchises have had championships, fortunately. But if you look at the championships that we've had and that this generation of kids grew up on, I mean, how, how many years did we wait for a Red Sox championship? We didn't wait one generation. We didn't wait two. We didn't wait three. We waited four generations. And these kids today, they've had, what, uh, how many world championships amongst the teams in Boston? So it's just an extraordinary time. But the fact that people know so much and they connect and that it matters within the culture. Like if you go to the Dominican, right? Baseball down there matters, right? If you go to Montreal, hockey, that matters, right? You, uh, I used to go to the games in the old forum. Uh, husbands and wives would get dressed up, right? They'd be dressed up in their Sunday best to go to the Canadi Canadians game, right? And then they'd go to the game, and then they'd go out to dinner after the game. It was part of the fabric of the culture, and it, and it mattered to everybody. Uh, the fact that it is in Boston, all sports matter. And everybody's involved. Everybody has a favorite team. They have a favorite player. And they don't just focus on one team. They focus on all the sports. Like, we got a lot of experts. We, we, we got a lot of assistant GMs in, in Boston. But isn't that one of the toughest things? Because you have so many experts who are always second-guessing you. And I'm sure you have to dial down the noise, but... I've heard these guys like, you know, Shaughnessy, and I've, I've heard all these different people come up and who, who never play the game, but they know more about the game than you know about the game. Well, they, they, they know more about the game, and they know a lot about the history of the game. And they, the good writers, understand the fan base, right? And they know how to poke the bear, right? And in, in Boston, uh, they like to play the drama, too. They like to have a hero, and they like to have a villain. Uh, but, you know, I, I worked for Harry Dalton, the great general manager for the Orioles, and he was a mentor of mine in Milwaukee. And Harry told me early on in my career, he said, Danny, he said, don't believe everything they write about you when it's good. He goes, because they're going to write a lot about you when it's bad. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he said, just try to keep it down the middle of the road. But, you know, in Boston, that's hard to do. Because of, because of the passion of, of, of the fan base. And th this is really a, uh, a city that loves star players and they love championships. So long as you can give the city and the fans star players that are good, that are, that are entertaining and championships, 
one of my favorite players was Rick Burleson. Loved him because I just thought he was just this gritty guy and he played all out. And you were just telling me about other players, like right? Trot Nixon, another guy that they, they loved here. Yeah, well, the fans, they, they, they appreciate hard work, right? In, in, in Boston, they appreciate the guys like Burleson that are fiery, the rooster. Yes. And, and, and they like Trot Nixon, the way he would grind out every at bat, the way he would run hard to first base and through first base. The way he, you know what? He, you he you say that, and I base. only mean to cut you off, but I, I got to ask you then, well, what was the love affair with Manny, Manny Ramirez? <laughs> because it was like there was sometimes he just say, I'm just Manny being Manny. M Manny was the most interesting player <laughs> because he, he was he was quirky. Right. He was unique. Right. Uh, how about how about Manny when he uh, dived into the stands and give the fan the ball. Right. Or, or, or take the ball back from the fan and throw it into the cutoff, man. You didn't see that very often, right? Huh? He just had that. He Some guys have that flair of whatever it is. It could be as wrong as it can be, but then all of a sudden it just it endears them to the fans in a way that even I look at a guy like Big Poppy, as great as you know all these other Red Sox players were, I still look at some people right now in this generation think that Big Poppy was maybe the greatest Red Sox to ever play the game. Well, Big Poppy was a great, great player. And him and Manny together, they were the most dynamic, middle-of-the-order hitters since Garrig and Ruth, wow. right? So if you, take, if you take a look at the record book, there were no two hitters as good as uh, Manny Ramirez and David Ortiz during their time here. And that's, that's one reason the Red Sox won those championships, right? You got those two guys in the middle of the lineup. That's a two-headed monster, right? Are you going to pitch to the left-handed power hitter that's patient at the plate, or are you going to pitch to the righty, you know? And those guys were big-time difference makers. But uh, you, you could say that David Ortiz was one of the great Red Sox players. And certainly one of the most clutch players, Right. David Ortiz mm -hmm. could get a hit mm -hmm. when you needed a hit. And he, he got some big hits in in uh, in playoffs. He got the clinching hit uh, against the Yankees to turn a series around. Manny Ramirez, he was the MVP of a World Series that he was in. So, I mean, that's the kind of players the Red Sox. Fans but see, like. I would I would. And the, 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 well, I'm going to give you a little bit of my baseball knowledge when I say that. But then I I look at Fred Lynn and I look at Jim Rice. Would they, would they complain seeing how dangerous they were as, as hitters? Oh, those guys were great players. I, I remember when uh, Jim Rice came up, he was heralded as the, as the top prospect in the system. Uh, he was a first-round draft pick and awesome strength. And then I think shortly thereafter, we brought up a, another top player. Now, Freddie Lynn wasn't as heralded as Rice coming through the minor leagues. He wasn't as high a draft pick. But when he got here, it was, it was evident to everyone, you know, this guy's a special player, how, how easy he could do everything, how he could play center field, how, how he had a sweet swing with power. Um, and he got to be a fan favorite uh, quickly. And, you know, that, that's a pretty good comparison of uh, top players uh, from another generation, right? Rice and Lynn. Well, thank you. Compared to <laughs> Manny and uh, Big Poppy. You know, I mean um, – You'd be hard pressed to find another couple of Red Sox, you know, better than those guys. Then you then you look back over the history of this game, and I, I think about Carly Skrimsky, just how great he was. You know, everybody was yaz crazy, and then you know you had the best hitter of all times, was the was the amazing one himself, the the Ted Williams. They got a tunnel name after the guy, you know. And, and the, the thing I love was I think it was, and this is you can tell me the story, and that he was at 400 uh, or someplace in there and could have set out the game and said, and the manager said, you sit out in now, you can have 400. And he said, no, 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 I want to play. And he went three for, three for five or something like I that. I think he got like four hits that day. He, but, but he had a big day and he raised his average to 406. But he, he, he was out there. He was out there and he was going to earn it, right? Ted, Ted, Ted was going to earn it. But think about the, uh, the great years that Yaz had, right? And, you know, not, not too many players these days. Triple crown? Yeah, but stay with one organization for their whole career, uh, I remember we honored uh, Cal Ripken at Fenway Park when Cal Ripken was retiring. Mm -hmm. And 
I, I said, here are two guys, very similar careers, right? They got 3,000 hits, 400 home runs, and they played for one organization. And, uh, you know, y- y- I think, uh, like I was saying, my brother and I, one team would be the Red Sox and one team would be the Orioles. So you had to imitate the batting stances of all the great Red Sox players at the time, Rico Petroselli, uh, Carl, Carl Yastrzemski, Carl uh, and then for the Orioles, Boog Powell, Frank Robinson. Uh, and, and, and that's how we followed the Red Sox and, 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 and got to know the players. But in New England, I think, I think kids still do that. I think you know, kids will still imitate the great Red Sox players. They're, they're imitating the shortstop now. One of the things you look at, which is, I think, really different, is the fact that you look at the finances have, have changed since the time that you started as a general manager to where it is now, where it is, I look at basketball, it's generational money now. At one time, you know, uh, I remember Tom Heinsohn used to tell me, he said, well, you know, once the season ended, what I have to do is I, I he started an insurance company because he wasn't making that much money. I look at players now is completely different with these salaries. Yeah, I think that's come with the interest, right? The, the, the more interest, the more people that follow the teams, the, you know, the more money there is and the more money there is for the players involved. And yeah, that's that's uh, a, a lot different now. I, I, I know when players were coming up in the minor leagues, uh, that was a part time job for them. Right. And they did that for seasonal work. And then in the off season, they'd go get another job and they try to train to get ready. Uh, they don't do that anymore. You know, they're, they're investing in their career. <laughs> right? These are, and, these and, are and young right, corporations. Just, exactly. Exactly. Because we, we know that the uh, athletes, their life uh, span as a player is short. It's a, it's a finite window. And you see all these young players that are doing everything they can to maximize that. And, and why, why wouldn't they, right? Where, where else are you going to get paid that kind of money to do something you'd like to do anyway, right? Where One of the things I look at in Major League Baseball, and they talk about from time to time, is bringing back, trying to get black players, and I mean black American players, not Dominican players, not, not from the Caribbean, but those players to come up in the mind. They've had a hard time doing that. How are they trying to turn that that page yeah major league baseball has had a lot of uh, problems in, in terms of losing ground uh with the black players uh, coming through the systems uh getting engaged with baseball at a at a, at a lower level at a younger age uh, i think we've lost a lot of uh, athletes to other sports and i think one of the reasons is that um, the, the fine motor skills of, uh, especially hitting, very, very difficult to uh, learn and be successful at. And a lot of these other sports, it's a little e- uh, easier to have more success right away. So I think a lot of that's got to do with like how we process players when they, when they get started. Well, you, you definitely can say that because you think of what of uh... – and can we put it mildly what a failure Michael Jordan was as a baseball player? <laughs> I mean, because, they, I mean, here he was the greatest, maybe the GOAT, and then he goes to baseball, and it was just, it was hard to watch. We, we had uh, Walter Herniak was from, from Swampscott or Peabody, right? He was a Red Sox batting coach, <clears throat> and he was out to my sports camp, and uh, Joe Morgan was razzing him, and he said, hey, Walter, you took the greatest athlete in the world, Michael Jordan, and you gave him a shit swing. <laughs> <laughs> the best athlete in the world. I mean, it was just, said, it said, was like, said, I was watching, but like he was chopping wood when he was swinging. I'm he, like, he, what? He said, well, Joe, he had a little bit of a late start on the baseball. But it, it's, it's hard to hit. It's hard to hit. And, you know, you, you talked about uh, Ted Williams and his, like, is single-mindedness of purpose, right? They said, Ted, what did you want to be known by? He said, oh, well, I just want to be known as the greatest hitter that ever lived, right? Wow. And that that was his mission, right? He, 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 he accomplished that. Uh, but it's, it's not easy to hit. And you, you're, you're seeing all these strikeouts these mm-hmm. days in, in uh, Major League Baseball. Um, but you know, to go go back to the uh, to the issue, Major League Baseball has done a good job recruiting worldwide. You see a lot of these star players coming to the big leagues from the Dominican uh, Tatis, 
whose dad was a big leaguer. Um, Guerrero, Vladimir Guerrero Jr., uh, who, whose dad's a Hall of Famer. Um, um, Shohei Otani. I mean, these are three of the biggest stars, but they've come to uh, Major League Baseball from other countries, right? And uh, I, I just think Major League Baseball has got to do a better job of processing players uh, in, in the States. Uh, and not, not just minority players. I, I, I think uh, younger players, ir- irrespective of their, of their race, uh, I just think we got to do a better job of helping them along from the, from the lower levels from the time they start. I asked a question one time of, uh, of somebody, and they, they stole my question and went and asked President Obama the same question. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you the question that I asked them. Is we, I'm I'm doing right now. We're putting the hall. Of, we're putting a um, in your backyard. What we're doing, we're we're putting those presidents in the back of of yours and uh, Mount Rushmore. Give me your and it could be baseball, whatever. Give me your Mount Rushmore of sports that you put in your backyard right now. Well, I'm going to give you my uh, Boston Mount Rushmore. Sports. You you can do whatever. I, I, this is your I, I, this is I'm, your I'm, yard. I'm, we don't I'm, care. I'm going to go with my Boston. Okay. And uh, my favorite player of all time was Pedro Martinez. Okay. Okay. Well, why do I like Pedro Martinez? Because he has everything that I ever looked for in a ball player. He had he had great skills. He's a great pitcher. Great fastball. Outstanding curve. No size. It, it, well, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. <laughs> Uh, outstanding curve, uh, great changeup, okay, terrific competitor. And his, uh, his mentor in uh, Dominican uh, dis- said he had the heart of a lion. Wow. Un corazón de Leon, right? Wow. And Pedro Martinez was a guy that he liked the spotlight. He liked to be in the spotlight. That 99 All-Star game was one of the great thrills of uh, for any baseball fan when Pedro came out and he just absolutely destroyed the American League and he embarrassed Sammy Sosa. (laughs) Sammy Sosa that winter had said that uh, Pedro wouldn't do as well if he was in the National League and and Pedro remembered it and he just absolutely embarrassed him. So if you ever want to have a good laugh, go watch that YouTube where Pedro strikes out Sammy Sosa. But anyway, I I would have Pedro. uh, Okay. uh, And... um, Let's see. Uh, well, my neighbor down the Cape is Bobby Orr, so he's he's going on my okay. Mount Rushmore. Okay. Um, he he meant so much to the region. Uh, he he, he uh, brought hockey into the mainstream, um, and uh, I, I I I gotta I gotta put him on my, my Mount Rushmore. Now. For for the Celtics, I'm going to put you on the Mount Rushmore. <laughs> you know what? They go, and, and I'm going to I'm going to put Bill Russell on the far side. Okay, <laughs> we don't we don't like your Mount Rushmore already, but but that's okay. That was that was pretty good. That was pretty good. I, 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 I'm I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to put the Max on the right side, <laughs> and I'm going to put Bill Russell on the left side. Okay, all right, and, All right. And they're, they're going to bookend uh, for the for the great Celtic tradition. And the fact that you came to the Celtics and you're still here. You're, you're a yeah. member of the community. Wow. You're, you're a member of the community. Not according to my ex-wife, but that's, <laughs> that's okay. We'll, we'll, let, we'll let you have that one day. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to let you go. So you got to uh, give me. Now, this is, uh, the, this is the one that's always a killer. You got three. Uh, this is fourth uh, one. No, and, and I'm, I'm going to take a couple more. No, you, no, you I, can't. I, I'm Mount, take Rushmore, a couple more. Oh, Mount Rushmore I, I, only has I, I, four people. I, no, no, I'm going to take a couple more. Oh, you okay. go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I got to put the greatest hitter that ever lived up there. Okay, okay, okay. okay. All right. Ted, Ted Williams goes there. And you may not know this, but the quarterback for the Patriots, when I was with the Expos, we drafted him as a baseball player. Wow. He was the left-hand hitting catcher from Sarah High School in Northern California, and his father said, you, you can draft him. You said left-handed? Left-handed hitting catcher. Is that right? Yeah, he's got all the great skills to be an outstanding baseball player, right? He's got the quick feet. Okay. He's got a great release. He's got outstanding leadership capability, and he's got power. He would have been a great baseball player. Dang, I, I, I would have never thought that. So, but, uh, so, so, so that's. You got about you. You're up to uh, right now five so far. Well, okay. So five, okay. 
I was pretty good. I, I, I got two Red Sox, mm -hmm. arguably the best hitter and one of the best pitchers ever. A, a Bruin. Mm -hmm. And you got Russell. Two Celtics, and we got a. We'll say, we'll say you got a we, Celtic we, and a half, but we'll go here <laughs> with that. But okay. And we got Tom Brady. Tom Brady. Okay. Right, that's pretty Brady. good. It's always when you think about Boston, you know, in, in just general, you, there are just so many great athletes who have come through here that it's just hard to categorize and get one guy over another or pick this or it pick really that is. because they're just so great and, and in their time. And I think, you know, playing here in Boston, I just always remember just like I always think some of my favorite games and, and one of my favorite games would have been playing the Lakers in 1984. And just being here and having a seventh game in Boston and the game, which was crazy, didn't start until nine o'clock at night. And that to me was like, it gave me, it, it broke my routine up. Because normally as a basketball player, you, you go to practice, you go shoot around, then you come back, you have lunch and take a nap and then you do whatever. And by the time I woke up, it was still like about five o'clock. So I still wasn't coming over to the arena for a while. So when when I remember those days and, and things that have happened here in Boston and then the Red Sox to win their, you know, their championship after all those those years. And, you know, that to me was was when you when they were down to the Yankees and everybody's like, hey, this is yeah, this exactly. Is over. And this is back. over. And then it was one game at a time. And it was like, come on. They can't come back and win this thing. There's no way they can come back. Yeah, but they did. Yeah. You, you know, to me, there is there is nothing nothing more humbling or that makes me prouder than when I go to Logan Airport and I look at all them banners. When I go through security yeah. there. Yeah. And I see all the Bruins banners. And then I see all the, all, all the Patriots banners. And then I see the Red Sox banners. And then I see the Celtics. Okay. <laughs> and I say, how did... How do the Celtics do that? Okay, I don't know. This is the top. Yeah, this is the big leagues. Yeah. Okay, this yeah. is the big leagues. How, how do you do that? And then how do you do that for that long? Just absolutely extraordinary. I, I can't believe that. Usually, myself. the window for a dynasty is like four to six yeah. years. Yeah, I mean, th th this went on for a decade. And Russell's more. run was crazy. And they more to win that eight. You win eight championships in a row. That to me, just by the fall, it, it just can't happen, and it did. Right. Just shows the greatness and the competitor that he was. I thought that that's where they really reached to. Yeah, you you, you got to have a single mindedness of purpose to have that type, those type of results, because you, you see all the cheating that goes on now in professional sports. Right. Ooh. You see all the cheating that goes on now in professional sports. So that tells you that at the top of the triangle, everybody's looking for that little edge, right? That little edge that'll keep them there and that'll help them be the champion, right? And for the uh, Celtics to do that year in and year out, okay? And then compare that to this uh, generation now for pro sports. I'm, I'm you're talking about the Olympics. You're talking about all, all the major sports. Everybody's trying to get an edge, and you have to do that to be at the top of your game, so, whether it's cycling or whatever it is. But to be able to maintain that edge for that long, truly extraordinary. That is what I see when I think about the, the city and the complexity and the winning attitude. Somebody was asking me today about, well, you know, what what's the expectation level for the Boston Celtics, you know, with their next with their new coach? And I said championship. Because unfortunately, over there in that building, you know, you you can't bring up a put up a banner of a a banner from maybe Division One or you won this one. It looked like the United Nations over there, if that was the case. <laughs> but it's all about winning championships. And I remember Red Arback saying that well. And I told you that story. How I'm sitting across from Red, and you're my general manager, and he's sitting there, and I'm a young young whippersnapper, and I'm just like, man, my 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 attorney sitting beside me, and Red says, well, Cedric, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to give you a million dollars. And I remember my leg just, <laughs> just shaking. I was like, oh, man. And I was so happy I had a table in front of me. And then all of a sudden, my attorney who's sitting beside me just says, we don't want that. <laughs> what? what do you mean we don't want that? It's like, I don't even know this guy. Get, the, get him out of here. And, and But was Red our back and, and just his demeanor? Uh, you know, the, the whole thing, even read now, the, the thing about the, the cigar, 
And, you know, if you think about that Boston Garden, you see guys now that the, the cigar said it all of excellence. And in, in when you think about the Celtics and who they were as a team, uh, you know, you and I have something in common, though. Marigold Medical. You know, you're going to tell me a little bit about, you know, our knees and, you know, because I can tell you about mine. Mine are not good enough to play ball yet, but but they're coming. How, how do you feel with yours now? Well, I'll tell you what, the, the guys at Marigold Medical, uh, they, they do it right. They, they, they do the, the whole holistic approach. They go from soup to nuts. Okay. And I, I've been a big believer in that everything is related in your body, right? Uh, if you have an injury to your shoulder, it's going to affect how you move. And then let me put my Coke away since you said that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> since everything is related, I'm just put the water right here. Okay. All but, right. But, thank you. But the guys at Marigold Medical, the, 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 they're they're on the cusp of something really big in regenerative medicine, and they uh, I went to them to to be able to uh, function right so that. Uh, you know, I'm I'm a veteran player now, right? I'm, I'm a little... We all are, but <laughs> you go on. And, and I, I I want some help to go uh, into those extra innings, right? So I can do the things that I'm doing, whether it's uh, playing ball with my seven year old son or or going out with my kids and my my grandkids to go skiing. I, I want to be able to do that. So I went to see the guys at Marigold Medical, and uh, they they gave me an evaluation and and. I've always been a big believer in you got to have a baseline to mm -hmm. know where you're coming from, mm -hmm. to, to know where you want to get to. And so they tested me on the state of the art uh, Hanova machine, which a lot of the uh, football teams use around the globe mm -hmm. with, with their top athletes. Mm -hmm. And they found out where I was. Uh, they made a recommendation for my flexibility to improve, to improve my strength. And then I got a couple of uh, regenerative shots, the stem cell shots. And then also the PRP. And I'm happy to say I was able to ski 38 days last winter wow. after not being able to ski and get myself back in shape. But it came from the approach uh, of soup to nuts, right? An evaluation, a recommendation, of, uh, an orthopedic exam, a phys physical therapy, and the shots. And I, I think they're on something big with this regenerative medicine because I've had a lot of my friends get um, transplants, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Knee, knees, knees and hips, mm -hmm. and I, I think that there's a place for regenerative medicine to uh, not only delay those, but to make the uh, athletes or the you know the, the the people more more functional and be able to enjoy their life more. Well, that, that is basically how I looked at it. Is like you want to get back to doing some things that you used to do, and mine is going up steps or going through aerobics, and it's made it a lot easier just getting out, doing those particular things. And and, then, and like I said, I don't want to get back and play. I don't want to come back to play, but, you know, if Danny Ainge needed, you know, the old <laughs> Danny Ainge needed the one day, I could give him a one day, but that was basically about it. But it, it's just it's just fascinating to see how, you know, you and I are older now, a bit older, and we're going through these transitions that at one time you would think were just, you say so you, you're old dude, that's how you're always going to be, and 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 that is really what I think has been really special about these guys. Yeah, I, I think it, it, with the uh, breakthroughs in medicine and also with the technologies, uh, people are living longer. And uh, if you were an athlete uh, or, or you were active when you were younger, you want to be able to maintain that. And uh, Marigold Medical will help you do that. You gave me a story a little bit earlier, and you were talking about one of your favorite players, Jim Rice, but I want to know if this is true or false. Jim Rice, great hitter. Jim Rice found out he needed glasses. And, 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 and it's like he couldn't see, and he was hitting, what, 300 to three, whatever. Was that true or not true? J Jim Rice was a, a great hitter, and I'm so happy he got into the Hall of Fame. And um, they, 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 they tell me at the end of his career, uh, they made recommendations to make an adjustment in his sight line to help improve his sight. Uh, but Jim, Jimmy uh, resisted those. Um, now, Jimmy may have been able to extend his career a little bit more, right? <laughs> Don't tell Jim that. <laughs> he, tell he, he may, he, uh, uh, I, I, we had this conversation. Um, and Jimmy, Jimmy's a great, Jimmy's a, a great Red Sox player. Uh, 
he got into the Hall of Fame, and I was so proud that he got in. Uh, I thought it was a great step for the organization, uh, for the Yawkeys, uh, and their legacy for Jim Rice to get into the Hall of Fame. Um, but uh, you, uh, you'll have to ask him. But I, I heard the same thing, that J Jimmy was proud and didn't, didn't take the uh, medical recommendation for a site adjustment. I always I heard that about Jim, and I've talked to him several times. And he always kind of just looks at me in an odd way with his glasses and kind of looking down <laughs> on me. I'm like, Jim, did it, is it true or not? So that's why I wanted to get an official approach. Now, the, the last question I want to ask you is about the, the owner of the, the Red Sox, just how he's done what he's done over the years that you're, your owner now. It's just he has just transitioned in so many different ways. And I look how the organization is going. What way do you see? His influence on. Well, the, the uh, I, I think the uh, record of the Red Sox organization speaks for itself, right? Uh, John Henry came in in two thousand and two, uh, and he had a mandate from the fans to win a World Series championship. So he followed through, and he won in two thousand four. He was able to break the team da uh, down and win again in two thousand seven. He won again in two thousand thirteen. And he probably had the best team in the history of the club in 2018. And they went wire to wire, right? My friend David Dombrowski uh, came in here as a general manager, and they just absolutely dominated. We, we played them in spring training in 2018, and they, 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 they beat us. We were very competitive with the Red Sox and the Yankees uh, for the first uh five years when I was with the Orioles, but in 2018, we weren't competitive. But that same Red Sox team also went through the American League. They went through the playoffs. They, 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 they won the pennant, and they went through the Dodgers, just like they went through us in spring training, arguably the best team in the history of the club. So uh, Red Sox fans have to be uh, happy uh, with the job that uh, John Henry and his group has done because he's delivered uh, more championships during that time than just about any other organization. And I think the last time the Yankees won a World Series championship wow. was wow. 2009. Wow. So since John Henry's taken over, I think he's, uh, he, 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 he's, done, he's done pretty well. Well, you know, I, I want to thank you for being on this podcast. It, it, you did an excellent job. Everything except you, that that Mount Rushmore thing of having five, six, seven, eight <laughs> players in Mount Rushmore, that was the only one I'll I give you. But but I, I, I really want to thank you. My baseball knowledge, again, was, uh, you know, I, I tried to sprinkle in a little bit what I've known. But And I also told you that my favorite player, if you, if you ever get a chance, just tell him. Willie Mays, my favorite player of all time, that there's somebody here who won a championship that would love just to say, hey, Willie, how you doing? Because he was the one guy be like that groupy person, like, oh. Oh, yeah, that was a thrill when he was at the uh, All-Star game in 99, man. I was, like, jumping up and down. Willie Mays, he's on the field out I mean, here Obama, in Fenway Park. I mean, Obama, President Obama was the same kind of way around Willie Mays. Willie I'm Mays. Like, yeah, yeah. Willie Mays, yeah. They're probably the most complete player ever, right? Yeah, that's what they, I would think. You know, Un unbelievable. Oh. All right. My, my pleasure, Cedric. Uh, thank you very thank much. You. Appreciate it. All right. Well, we're done here. Uh, we had a great time. Uh, you guys uh, need to make sure that you get on this podcast and subscribe and all those good things. And, uh, you know, you are absolutely a treat to have. And uh, I'll pay you next week. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what you did. All right, guys. Deuces.